Buenas, buenas. Welcome to Music Marketing TV. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and today we're going to be covering FL Studio FX uh, in our series of FL Studio webinars for Pro Tools users. So if you haven't been here before, we have a few other classes that we've uh, had over the past uh, two months. So on May 21st, we had the introduction to FL Studio's workflow. On May 28th, we had recording and audio editing. On June 18th, we hosted MIDI editing. June 25th, we hosted FL Studio Synthesizers. July 16th, which is today, we're going to cover the effects inside FL Studio. And on July 23rd, we're going to have a review. Where we're going to go over everything that we covered before, and we're trying to make a song together live. So I'm going to wait just a few more minutes to have people come into the chat. I know some of you guys were actually here before. I don't know why uh, YouTube started uh, streaming my content when I was just... Uh, uh, sitting on my my the um, live stream on my end, it was kind of weird. I never actually had that happen before. But as you guys stroll along, let me know where you're where you're like watching us from, and the time that's at your um, in your time zone. Because I know some of you guys tune in from South America, some of you guys tune in from Europe, Africa, even, which is amazing. I mean, I think we are just. Uh, I think, no, we've had people from India. I think we're just missing Antarctica, probably. And we're probably just missing a few. Uh, we haven't had everyone from every continent together at the CN Town, so that'd be interesting. But um, yeah, let's give it a few seconds to have everyone roll into the chat. And I'm also going to go on my phone to um, make sure that everything is, is fine on your guys' end. Because it's, it's uh, like I said, it's kind of, YouTube works kind of strange. Okay, let me go, go to my channel. Okay, now I can follow you guys with my cell phone. Okay. Just gonna make sure that my voice, I can hear my voice here. All right, cool. But um, yeah, it's it's actually been a long time since the last stream. It's it's almost been a month. Follow you guys, with my cell phone. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and load up a file. And yeah, here we go. This is uh, a file in its, all its glory. We are going to show you some, um, a few demos. I'll, I want to show you though, effects in the context of a track, which is something I usually don't see in set tutorials. Like they'll show you, oh, this, this reverb and a vocal and They'll just show you the um, the vocal by itself, and yeah, usually it's they don't have a full production. This is not a complete production, so this is not some music that has been released, but it's uh, very much uh, structured, and there's a few quite a bit of instruments. I think we have uh, let's see, we have let's say fifteen ish instruments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. We have nineteen instruments, and we have audio clips as well. So it's a it's a bit larger than your average demo, and yeah, we actually have this all structured. So let's play back this uh, music that I have here. Let me know what you guys think about the the last chord in the in the, the A bar phrase, because it's, uh, I'm still a little bit contingent about it, but um, you guys are gonna hear some of the FL Studio effects here, and we're gonna affect them um, later in the, um, or manipulate them later down in the live stream, and I'm gonna show you how to set them all up. So let's go ahead and play this back, this demo.
All right, so that was the uh, the demo track that we're gonna go around uh, back to today uh, because I am gonna show you some other demos, but I'm gonna keep coming back to this one. Um, basically, I just wanna show you guys three different types of plugins inside of Thought. The first being the Dynamics plugins. So if I press uh, F8, and if I go to my effects side and select Dynamics, you guys can see that we have a few different plugins. We have the Fruity Compressor, the Fruity Limiter, Fruity Multiband Compressor, the Fruity Sock Clipper, Maximus, Press Work, Sanguidizer, and the Transient pro uh, Processor. Sorry, Press Work is a, is a third-party plugin, but I, I put it in here uh, with my other effects. And I, I will actually show you um, how to add your uh, third-party VSTs into the, these lists, because some people ask me, hey, how can I put them here because usually they just end up in the um, news section or in the miscellaneous section. You know, you see that you, there you have Presswork, you have Satin, which are third-party plugins. Usually they end up in the miscellaneous section. So if you want to have them nicely organized, I will show you that in a second. After I show you the Dynamics plugins, I'm going to go through some of the filter plugins, uh, which include the EQ. I can't, I still can't pronounce Equal. Equal. I can't pronounce that yet. <laughs> the Fruity uh, filter. Fruity Love filter. Parametric EQ and Parametric EQ2. And then after that, we're going to look into some of the delay plugins, which include um, the Fruity Convolver, Fruity Delay 2, Fruity Delay 3. I'll pretty much just be covering Delay 3 because it m basically makes Delay 2 obsolete, unless you have older projects and you still want to open up Fruity Delay 2. There's also the Fruity Delay Bank. There's the Fruity Reverb 2. Uh, Fruity Reverb 1 is still included inside of Fall. They just don't have it... Um, up front for you to see it, uh, but you can pull it up. If you uh, right click on your mixer track or left click on your mixer track and then go to uh, more plugins and you type in reverb, you see that the original 40 reverb is still here. And a lot of the plugins that are included inside of Studio, a lot of the older effects, probably the ones before 2010 um, are still supported they're just not, you know, um, shown inside of the the browser tab because there's better better plugins now. So Imagine uh, makes it so that you're more likely to choose uh, free reverb two than instead of going back to the old algorithm. I know there's there's still some people that prefer this reverb. I don't know why, but they do. It it could be the case that they just prefer it because it's a little bit more lo-fi than the newer, more high quality reverb. So they will go for back to the free reverb to get the um, their old school reverb sounds. But yeah, that's how you can get those old Evil Studio plugins. Uh, actually, let me show you how to add those to your um, to your plugin list real quick, now that we're on that topic. So let's load up that Fruity Reverb again. So let's select Reverb 2, click on it. And now we have the Fruity Reverb 2. Now when we are in our plugin database, which is the third window across here on the browser, click on the plugin database and go to effects. And you can click on Fruity, new, VST3, VST. And you can see all your installed plugins. Now, if you want to have them come up with a picture, you come up here, 
select effects. And now you can see that here we have all our plugins, our favorite plugins with pictures. So what I'm going to do is go to the delay and reverb, come back to my fruity reverb, click on the arrow right here and select add to plugin database, like as favorite. You're going to click on that and it says uh, fruity reverb will be added to subcategory delay reverb. And you say, okay, I accept this and boom, there we go. We have the fruity reverb there. You can do this with your third party plugins as well. I'm going to do this with uh, the fat filter. Uh, let's see. Where's the reverb pro R. Now that we have the pro R open, I can click on it, select add plugin database, flag as favorite. I'm going to accept it and boom, there we go. We have the fat filter pro R there so that way you can add your third-party plugins and make them easily accessible to you uh, by pressing f8 and now you can just go to the delay reverb and you have your plugins right there you can also load them by pressing f8 and typing in pro r press enter and there you go you can load up uh, pro r so this works really well with all your plugins i really like this way of loading effects i don't think there's a daw that does this any better than fl so let's close this browser and let's open up the the channel rack back up. So there we we learn how to set up the your effects, your favorite effects. Now let's take a look at uh, the um, other effects I was going to show you at the very end, which are the the miscellaneous ones, the ones that do. Um, uh, more of a sound design than rather traditional dynamics and spectral um, editing. So here we have uh, the gross beat. We also have new tone, new time. I covered these in our audio editing uh, class. So go check out the, I believe it was the second FL Studio class. Let me look at the uh, schedule real quick. Yeah, it was on May 28th. We did recording and audio editing. So go check back the, um, the second live stream we did for FL Studio for Pro Tools users. For recording and audio editing, and there you will find the full like 30, 40 minute segment I did on new tone and new time. Uh, let's go back to miscellaneous. So basically, new time is uh, a time stretcher. Then we have new tone, which is a pitch uh, editor, and then we have pitcher, which is a real time pl effects plugin, uh, kind of like auto tune. And then we have Vocodex. So today I'll be covering more Vocodex um, than these other two. I'll briefly touch on them, but we're going to be covering more. By Vocodex, um, because it's it's such an underrated plugin, and of course uh, we gotta cover Gross Speed because everyone loves a little bit of Gross Speed. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go over through some of the comments before I hop into the first section. Let's see. Hey, hi, Mr. Harding. You're tuning in from Jamaica. Thank you for for being here with us. Then we have um, RB Music. Please, after uh, FL Studio series, make a series on music production course. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Uh, it's just going to take a little bit of time, but we could. We can see what we can do. We have Jake Mix, Roblox, Maniac. What's up, man? And we have Super Audio Bros. That's a cool name. That's actually really cool. And we have uh, Sahabe Moz from Israel. Hello, man. Thanks for tuning in from all over the world. We really appreciate that you take your time and come here and join us at Music Marketing. Uh, as I'm going along with these demos, make sure you guys drop questions and I'll try to answer them in the last 30 minutes. If it's something that, um, if I have a plugin loaded up and you ask me a question on that plugin, I could definitely uh, cover that. But if you're asking questions about other plugins, I'll leave that to the end of the live stream and cover that in the last 30 minute Q&A. So let's go to the Dynamics plugin. So first up, uh, let's cover the free compressor now compression is often seen as like uh, some very i think it's kind of misunderstood because people think um it's just to make things louder but in reality it's it can serve different purposes it could make things punchy it can make things softer it can make things um release longer so it could you can definitely use it for different purposes so i'm going to slow my kick drum here that's my claps. I can't read. So here's my kick drum. 
I'm going to solo the, uh, or remove the effects. So this is when my kick sounds like normally. I'm going to keep the master uh, bus uh, on because it, I mix into this master bus. So please keep that in mind. Um, I'll show you later what Maximus does because it's a very powerful plugin. But I'm just going to keep this on, on my pre-master. So we have uh, the free kick and let's load up the free compressor. So we look at a couple things. Let's look at the oscilloscope and let's look at the uh, waveform view here. If we remove this compressor, you can see how the waveform view becomes a little bit more squared. Let me actually go to my view settings and fix this a little bit. There you go. So you guys can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. So without the free compressor, you see that the attack is a little bit quieter than the body of the kick drum. So once I engage the compression, now my attack of the kick drum, let me pause this, is a little bit louder than the rest of the body. So it works very well providing punchiness in the case of drums. Let's uh, remove this compressor and freeze this again. You see that? Now my attack is less punchy. Now this is because the way I set up the attack that can sustain release. Um, for those of you who are Pro Tools users, of course you know this, but we do have people who are a little bit newer to music production and audio engineering, or maybe some people that don't realize they can use compressors for this. So I'm going to cover this for just a brief moment. So basically with our threshold, we can say, hey, after a certain point in time, Hold up, let me unfreeze this. There you go. After a certain point in time, I want to actually... Oh, I messed up something. There you go. By the way, uh, to undo on your plugins, you press Control, Alt, and Z multiple times to undo. So if you go to your uh, history, your project settings, current project history, you can uh, redo and undo things. So even if you did a knob tweak, you can go ahead and undo them. Uh, so right there, I just saved my butt because I didn't know. I, I guess I changed the compressor settings, but yeah. So here we can select, hey, after a certain point in time, or not time, um, in level, I want my compressor to engage. And now I'm gonna tell it to compress. So after minus 35 dB, my compressor is gonna compress right here with a ratio of 17 to one. So this means that every 17 dB that goes above 35 dB, it becomes one dB. If I set this to nine to one ratio, you got a little bit more level because everything that goes above 35 dB, every 9 dB turns into 1. So the ratio is a little bit smaller. If you go to somewhere in around 3.5, it's even smaller than that. So we affect the signal less. Let's bring this back up. Now, if I set the attack a little bit further down the line, You'll see that more of the kick goes through. Whereas before, we were compressing basically from the beginning of the, of the kick, right? So it's very easy to visualize this uh, once you put a uh, oscilloscope next to your kick drum. Uh, the next thing is the release. Listen. You hear how the compressor doesn't let go of the kick drum as quick as it did when it has a, a quicker release. It clamps onto it and it holds onto the tail of the kick drum a little bit longer. So those are very important parameters. Threshold, attack, ratio, release. Very important. You're going to find them pretty much every compressor. Here we have the type. 
There's different compressing types. So we have hard, soft, medium, vintage, soft release. You can hear that they're slightly a bit different. So just find the one that suits your taste and stick with that. I'm going to press uh, or go back to my history to undo all that so that I can send my compressor back to how it was before. Let's see. There we go. The next is the transient processor. I'm going to show you what this is here. This is basically like a compressor on steroids, but for high freaking high uh high changing material. So um, what I mean by high changing material is when you have frequencies that move very quickly, the transient processor is going to affect them. When you have uh, frequencies or I mean a um, signal that is moving a little bit slower, the transient processor is not going to affect them as much because they're moving slower. So it means that they don't they're not uh providing any snappiness to your signal. So if you hear a snap, it comes very quickly. If you hear a clap, well, it's quick, quick. It has some meatiness to it. So it doesn't change or flick as quick as a snap. So think about the transient processor as being a snapping tool. So you can make things snappier or you can make things less snappy. You can also make things a little bit uh, more full because you can control the ratio of that snap to the body of the instrument. So let me show you. So here making it punchier, you can see that in my oscilloscope. I can make it less punchy. And notice how I'm affecting just the high end too. I'm gonna use a uh, spectrum analyzer now. So my bottom end is not really affected. But rather it's mostly the top end because that's what is moving quicker inside a in waveform view. So if I go back to the oscilloscope, you see that the higher frequencies change quicker than the lower frequencies or move quicker. So um, yeah, that matters. And we have a split frequency here. So we can say, hey, I only want to affect frequencies above a certain uh, level. So here we can see up on the left hand corner, our information tab, we can see, we can set it to like 700 Hertz. Now we're only pushing up the clickiness. If I drop it a little bit lower to, let's say, 60 hertz, we're also getting some of that thump. But of course, we're primarily affecting the frequencies that change quicker. We have the tax settings right here. So we want, we want a quicker attack. We want something a little bit smoother. We also have a drive for distortion. Which is very interesting because you can drive it hard and then push the attack very hard, but then you get a, a very tough kick, but it doesn't have a lot of presence, which is very interesting. And then we have a release parameter. So now this controls the decay basically after our attack. So while the release on the compressor was very delicate, as in you can be very precise with it. Let's go back to the compressor. You hear how the, the end of the kick is held onto? This just doesn't happen with the transient processor. The transient processor takes care more of the body itself after the transient. So there are two very different uh, effects. Uh, a compressor could do something similar to the transient processor, but it's a little bit more difficult to do because the transient processor takes into consideration how quick waveforms are moving. 
oh, how do I segregate the channels in the mixer? So the way I do that, it's, it's very simple. You just press Control, left click. So you go into this button right here, the mute solo button. It's right there, I don't have the kick drum. I'm gonna press Control, left click. You mute everything else but this track that you're on or any tracks it's sending audio to. So you can see here that we have this kick right here playing. We also have the drum reverb playing, which is very, very tiny. And of course, this kick is going to a kick bus. So that kick bus is then sending to the pre-master. So all that's still turned on while everything else is turned off. Very simple. Okay, let me go back and undo all my changes here. So we covered the compressor, the, tra uh, the transient processor, and the way shaper is very interesting. I'm gonna skip over the EQ because I'm gonna cover that in a second with uh, all the rest of the filtering uh, processors. So the way shaper works basically as a um, input signal going this way and an output signal going that way. What I, what I mean by that is you see my input signal is set to a level right here and then I can knock it down by setting up a little line right here. You can right click to set a node and tell it to go down. So my kick is no longer going above around, let's say, what is this, 17.5 uh, dB. If I bring this back up to how it was before, we are now at 16. If I wanted to be more drastic, I can right click to create a node right there, bring this down, bring this other one down. I could also right click to create curves. And you can even see that we have double curves. So we can create really cool distortion effects. And this could actually be very beneficial to 808s and those type of instruments. Uh, of course, I use this for hard style kick drums. Um, you guys have followed any of my other classes or videos that I've done before. You guys know that I'm obsessed with kick drums, so I'm not going to get much more into this distortion or else uh, I'll spend an hour here. Uh, but let's go back to this other node that we created. Uh, we can right click, set copy value, and paste it across. So now, because we have told this wave shaper that every frequent, every uh, every uh, bit of a dB that goes above 50% has to be knocked down to below 50%, we have created a hard clipper. So now nothing goes above 21 dB, whereas before we had the kick going up to 15 dB. Now I can come into my post and give it more level if necessary. I already pushed this up to the max before, before I did uh, this uh, this uh, tutorial. And down here we also have a few other um, things. We have freeze editing. So if you are already happy with the way you have distortion, you can freeze it and you can still edit the pregame and the mix, but without risking you know clicking on something and dis uh, destroying your uh, your lovely preset that you made. So if I did something like this that I liked, you can freeze it. And now when you click on it, you can't easily um, destroy the wave shape you have. Whereas if you're just strumming along, let's say you, uh, you're tr trying to swipe away, you click that, you're like, oh, I just destroyed it in my kick drum and destroyed it. So you can freeze it. You have a draw tool, so you can draw things in, which would get really weird and interesting results. You can even make things a DC offset if you want. Of course, you can fix this by oversampling, enabling HQ mode and centering this. Here I can click the oversample to tell the program how much oversampling I want. Oh, you mean how I make this little space between channels? You got it between seven and eight. 
Are you talking about this right here? Let me re let me undo this real quick. Let me load up the project again. Because I don't want to keep that distortion profile that I made. <laughs> I want to go back to the original one. Okay, there you go. So I think you're referring to um, these little ones, these little uh, channels. So I'm going to add a channel by right-clicking, pressing I. Now, you see how right-click, you can select, hey, I want to insert a track. So insert one. You could also tell it to group with above track. See that? And you can actually do this quicker. So if I, let me delete this. Oh, keep pressing the run button right there. Right click. <laughs> Hold on. E to delete, E to delete, enter. Okay, so if I add in more channels right there, right click an I to insert the channel, I can swipe from the bottom to the top, and now they're gonna be grouped together. You see that? So now I can close them out, close them down altogether. So if I go down to my leads, let's say I don't wanna see them in my project, see how they're all organized under this leads tab. I can click on this button right here, boom, and shut everything down. So now I can only see the top track and then everything else is hidden. So that's helpful if you're doing a lot of, uh, you know, a big session. This session isn't that big, but I do have around, I think we counted 18 or 19 instruments. Oh, in the mixer. Okay, I got you. That works basically the same way. Let's see. You right click and select separator. That's pretty much it. See it? So let's say you want to put uh, other types of drums here. Separator. And there you got a separator. You can call this... Uh, change the color of them. Call this, let's say, distorted kicks. And there you go. It's very simple. But yeah, it's also very helpful that you mentioned that because uh, if you are setting your routing up, it it's very easy to get mixed up. You know, if you're, let me go to all these blank ones over here. If you have kick drums, snare drums here, you have maybe synths over here, it's really easy to get mixed up. And when you're doing mixing, sound design, adding effects, you want to keep everything nicely organized. So what I usually do is I set all these channels to go to a kick bus, all these channels here to go to the snare bus. All these other percussion to go into their own bus right here. All the subs to go to this other bus right here. And if you see here on the lead section, which I'll show you down later, I routed them all together to their master bus by right clicking and cycling route to this track only. So now they're going to the leads master fader. Now the leads master fader is the one that dictates that these tracks now go to the master and also that they're going to reverb and a course effect. But on top of that, I have a gross speed on them. So the, so I'll show you that guys how to set up this gross speed later, but essentially I'm routing all those leads now to be affected by the gross speed. So in the drop of the track, let's go to the second drop. This growthy, growth speed now affects them all together. Whereas if I remove it, you hear there, I have two lead sounds and they're being routed to the same box. Now, I only need to use one growth speed. Yeah, man, sure, no problem. If you are interested in learning more about the mixer, go check out our mixing or audio recording instead of file. So that was, uh, May 28th, we cover that on the second class we did 
We also cover that on May 21st as well with the introduction to Eiffel's workflow. Okay, so we have, uh, let's go back to the kick drum in the dynamics section. So we pretty much covered the wave shaper, the, the um, compressor, and the transient processor, which are very important tools. We have not covered the fruity, um, the fruity limiter, which is a very important tool inside Apple Studio. Now, the fruity limiter works as basically four different plugins. It's kind of crazy. Um, let's load up the the fruity limiter into this pads right here. So you hear that I'm creating side chaining effects with growth speeds on my other instruments, like my leads. Right now, I don't have the pads doing any of that because doing growth speed type of side chaining on pads is usually a little bit too aggressive. So what I'm going to do is load up a fruity uh, limiter. So I can just type in limiter, press enter, and there we have it. So first of all, the first thing you're greeted with is of course a limiter because that's what's in the name they're not they're not they're tricking us that it's only limiter but at least they're giving us a limiter first if i click on compression over here we have a compressor section here and also a noise gate very interesting not only that but we also have a saturation and a drive or a gain so it's almost like having four plugins in one also you have input sidechain signal so you can add more um, uh, a kick drum in this case, which we will do, and have it sidechain your your pads, your leads, whatever you have. You could also put a compressor on leads and have it be compressed by vocals. So whenever you have a vocal come in, it cleans up the leads for you. So your vocal can stay nice and present. So right now what I'm gonna do is route the signal from the kick drum into the pads. This is done quite easily. All I have to do is go to the kick channel find my pad channel which is here let me make it very visible for you guys pads go back to the kick channel right click on the upward arrow inside of the pads and select route to this track only i mean search into this track and now my kick signal is going to be taken up by the fruity limiter in the compression mode i can click on sidechain and use insert 2 which is my kick drum uh, of course let me rename that as well. So now you see there it's named correctly. And now when I bring my threshold down, we see a little bit of a, of a little bit, bit of a little diagram right there that shows a kick drum right there on the graph. If I bring it down enough, and then engage the ratio to actually start compressing. I get a little bit of sidechain compression there. Actually, I'm doing quite a bit, but I, I need to because the pads are very, very quiet. If I click on it, you can pause the signal. You can hover over it and on the top left hand corner right here you get information on level right there so we right there we have the, the pads hitting at minus 18 minus 17 if i drop it down to where the kick is compressing you can see that we're doing roughly uh, eight dbs of compression which may be too much for this pad because we can see there on the left hand corner that we're compressing at minus 26.6 and then we're going back to full level at minus 17. So we're doing quite a bit of compression. So let's uh, pull the ratio down. Make this a little bit softer. And there we go. We got a little bit of compression going. We also have the knee. And think about this as a, like a little curve dictating how fast things rise back up again. We also have the attack and the sustain, which acts kind of like a uh, RMS controller. So 
so it's very interesting. It, it's uh, a lot of people underestimate this plugin. They will tend not to use it. I don't know why, um, but it's very very powerful. We can even do some saturation here. Let's grab some of this. Saturate everything above uh, minus twenty five. And we're game. We can see some of the higher frequencies are being lifted up. And also the mid-range gets a little bit more uh, in your face. And we're not pushing up the level that much. It's probably only going up 1 or 2 dB. It's very, very cool. Let me undo this. And finally, there's the noise gate. Now, the noise gate is uh, it's very powerful. Again, uh, we have release, gain, threshold. Let me remove the, the reverb from this so you can hear it. So you hear there, as soon as I pause the track, it cuts off everything. So this is cool because sometimes you want to um, stop a track and you don't want to affect the the level of your pads. So you don't want to automate this guy because then you can actually mix with it anymore. So what you can do is uh, modulate the threshold. So you can automate the threshold and tell it, hey, at the fifth bar, I want you to stop. almost immediately and we're cutting off the release whereas if we took the threshold off it fades off a little bit nicer so the noise gate is usually used for vocals and stuff like that where you want to remove uh, the noise information so let's say um, I'm talking right now you can tell the noise gate hey everything above uh, minus 40 dB is okay to play back once 40, uh, once my signal goes below 40 dB, I want to cut it off, boom, shut it down. And you can tell it, hey, the gain I wanted to brought down to 0 dB. And I want the release to be very immediate. So now everything cuts up quicker. So again, you can use this on vocals to remove the noise from the background while your vocalist is not singing, so it's very helpful. And of course, uh, I almost always forget to cover the limiter, so you can set the ceiling. You can drive into it, and of course, you can use the saturation in conjunction with the limiting. to get a very compressed effect with distortion, but not a lot of aggressive distortion. Uh, a lot of people will use a free limiter, just you know, slap it on the master bus. Actually, the preset of Evil Studio, when you load it up, basically limiter, it has a limiter already on the master channel, so that if you're you know, stacking drums, You don't blow your ears out because <laughs> that, that could be easily done if you go above let's see there you go without that fruity limiter we'd get a lot of clipping um if we do go to the limiter we can see that we have a release sustained again it's the sustain node is almost like a like it says it here it's a peak window um so it, it's a little bit it's a little bit more different than most limiters so read the manual if you press f1 you can open the manual in google i'm not going to do that right now though but 
you will learn that the sustain is almost like a precursor to the uh, release, almost like a decay. So it's very interesting. And you you also have eight different curve types for your release. And your tech has eight as well. So you can go from having something that's smoother to something that's a little bit more um, more heavy on your transient. Let's close this down. Let's go back to the synchronized FOP. I'm going to take a short water break. So please give me a second. Okay, yeah, I really needed that. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, we covered basically the dynamics plugins. The only thing we're missing now is the Maximus. So the, the Maximus is a 40 limiter on steroids. So it's like having three 40 limiters in one. Uh, not only that, but it can also do some wave shaping as we saw in the previous examples with the kick drum. So you can say, hey, on my master, I want nothing below uh, minus ADV. Of course, you wouldn't want to do that, but I'm just trying to show you how powerful this is. Uh, you could do the opposite. You can boost this up to add saturation. You can say, hey, I want all the lower frequencies to be slightly saturated or, or the lower uh, levels below, let's say, uh, Minus 18 dB to be saturated. Which is very, very subtle. But let's do this a little bit more aggressively on this band right here. Now that is too much because you get into the realm of... Uh, Distortion, flipping on that small section because you can basically um, let me make this very, very large. You can basically make hard cuts here too. So if I were to click on this right here, you can basically make clipping before you actually do clipping right here. So you can, you can even do some bit rate reduction with this plugin. And then you can see how certain uh, frequencies are basically quantized to be uh, are certain. I keep calling them frequencies, but I'm, I'm talking about a certain level will be quantized to a certain uh, signal right there. So you see there, here we have it hitting at minus eight. And then we have this other green level right here, which is this guy, which we're having those frequencies. Um, again, <laughs> that DB, uh, that that, level, that signal hit at minus. Uh, nine-ish so you can be very harsh but let's not do that let's delete them right clicking and delete this guy now if you saw there I basically made maximus bigger by clicking this button and maximize and now you can use this basically as a mastering uh tool so you can go check your low end i'm gonna solve it if i go to the uh band section i can change the positioning of the low end filter i can also set this to be uh 12 dB, so it's a little bit smoother, or 18 to be a little bit, uh, or minus 24 to be a little bit more, uh, more aggressive. If I click here, 
I can set certain settings such as uh, doing uh, spare states. If I go to the, let's see, where is it? The master, I can click on, um, oh, here, here we go. Why am I forgetting this? There's a button here for, uh, to engage. Huh. I'm really forgetting where this button is. It's it's the button to engage um, the interface multiband compression. Anyways, there's a button here somewhere. I, I keep forgetting where it is. So basically, whenever you do a uh, uh, the bands here have minimal uh, phase distortion whenever you are moving your bands across, which is very important because you don't want to be distorting any of your bands. So we also have a low cut filter. So let's say you don't need anything below 30 hertz. You can get rid of everything below 30 hertz. Let's look at our mids. Let's say we want to have our mids be more saturated. We can do so too. We can even do saturation up to a certain point and then maintain the click of the kick drum nice and clean as possible. And I want to go back to the main track. My perceived loudness is much, much greater. And because I'm compressing the master se section with the master band right here, I'm not getting clipping. So it's very, very uh, helpful that we have all these three bands here together, low, mids, and highs. With the high band, in this case, I'm doing uh, a little bit of boosting and a little bit of saturation. Because I, I just felt like this, I didn't have enough high end presence in this track when I was working on it. So there you go, that's the Maximus. Basically, how you work with it. Of course, you have all these parameters: the pre-gain, the post-gain, the sustains, and very similar to the Fourier uh, limiter, we have eight different curve types. We can also select sustain to be peak or RMS, which is very cool. And we also have a third release or you know parameter. So we have release here, another sustain slash decay-ish parameter, and then we have release again. Oh, here we go. Here's the look ahead delay. And we have a mix of uh, all, of, all our bands together. So you can basically do like parallel compression. If you're distorting the master channel and you wanna just get a little bit of distortion in, you can also... Actually, uh, sorry, if you want to do um. A lot of saturation in your mid band. If only you want to add a little bit to your overall mix, you can do that back here. So this is a good knob to figure out, hey, if you did too much distortion here or a little bit too much uh, you know, saturation here, you can roll back this and say, hey, yes, I did a little bit too much, so let's roll it back. And that sounds about right, right there. So let's reload the track again. That basically sums it up for the Dynamics plugins. So we, co we covered quite a bit right there. Some very important tools. Now let's go ahead and look at the filtering plugins. We have a few of them inside of file. Of course, we have the Fruity Parametric EQ. 
Let's put that on the master. Basically, we have eight EQ nodes. So we have the, the eight bands right there. We can choose if we want them to be uh, low pass, high pass, notch, uh, regular band, like that. High shelf. There should be a low shelf right there. Low shelf. Yeah, so we have, oh, and band pass there, there we go. So we have a few different uh, types, and if we bring them all the way down, see that? We get rid of that band. So if we get rid of the bands that we don't need, we can save some CPU. You also have engage high quality over sampling mode by default, which is very cool. Now, if you want to save even more CPU, you can disable that. If I load up the performance monitor, You'll see that the 40 parametric EQ is so light on the CPU that basically you can use 100, 200 of them and not have to worry about uh, any issues. You see that there the percentage is closer to 0% than even 1%. If I take the HQ off, you'll see that it's basically non-existent. So, I mean, for the most part, just keep on the HQ as well. You can remove the band tokens so if you don't want to see them, if you just want to see the curve. You can go ahead and do that. You can monitor your input signal or your output. So it's a uh, really harsh cutoff right there. There we're seeing the inputs and there we're seeing the output. We could take the monitor off if that distracts you. So cool. And we have, of course, the the bandwidth controls, and the frequency frequency controls here, and basically every primary here is automatable. Even the uh, filter type. So you can go ahead and use these without any issues. We also have, uh, of course, octave here and some basic indications of where the sub, bass, low mids, mids, high mids, presence, which is very cool. I don't understand why people don't use this little grid up here enough. And of course, we have the treble. So you guys can go ahead and EQ right there. It's also important to note that you can load these up inside Patcher. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about what Patcher is in a, f in a few minutes. But basically, you can create even more uh, crazy EQs and crazy compressor types later down the road. Oh, I did mention, I did forget one compressor plugin, which is a 40 multiband compressor. Uh, basically, it's the 40 compressor, but split into three bands. So. where you can control the compression on the low band, mid band, and high band. It's a little bit simpler to use than, than the Maximus. So if you understood what we did with Maximus, you can apply that to the um, Fruity multiband compressor as well. Okay, let's move on forward to the Fruity Love Filter. Now the Fruity Love Filter is essentially a bank of eight filters that you can route to each other. So if I click on output here to add to the next, you can add signal to the next one. This one is on my leads. So let's mute my leads or sell my leads. So you see here that I'm routing band one now to uh, band two. I can disable band two. And we have the clean one band. Let's just focus on that for now. So we have a cutoff, we have filter types right here. So 
So we have several different filter types. We also have a drive cycle. <laughs> And we even have a way shaping section, which is even more distortion. So yeah, pretty much in every FL Studio plugin you'll find, they add a little bit of extra things. Um, if we go back to the cutoff, let's remove the drive. You see that we can add a uh, envelope. And right now it's not working that nicely because I have this automated. I'll show you why I have it automated in a second. Let's, uh, let's load up another one. Uh, love. You go. If we go back to the low pass, create a little pan right here. If we go to the input envelope follower section, let's mute the uh, gross beats from these other leads for a second. Let's make this was a stain loop. You can see that we can make an automatic filter. With the help of this uh, input uh, envelope follower. Now, the envelope follower is cool, but it's based on audio. So in the case that I want to have the cutoff triggered by MIDI, what I can do is set up a fruity envelope controller and copy and paste my MIDI for my lead synthesizers to the fruity envelope controller. Now, from that fruity envelope controller, I can draw an envelope and go to the fruity love filter, right click to link it to the controller. So I'm going to link it to the envelope controller articulator one. I'm going to hit accept. I'm going to disable the pattern on the cutoff right here. Hold up, I think I did something wrong here. Let's see. Hold on, let me load up the other filter. Oh yeah, of course, you can't hear because the filter is all the way open. So let's go over here. So here we can see clearly that um, if I right click on, let's open up the new filters as well. If I right click on it, again, link to controller, set it to be controlled by articulator one. Whenever I automate the base on our articulator one, Now, now that controls the cutoff. So 
in conjunction with the envelope controller here, I can create a, a basically a filter that controls multiple different synthesizers. So instead of having to automate all the cutoff knobs on all my synthesizers, I simply have routed them all to one bus, and now they're all being controlled by the same filter. So that means that they decay together, they start together, they get filtered together, and it's a very clean uh, mixing strategy. So let's go to a little build up here. Let's see here, chord stacks. Actually, here we go. So you hear, we see here how they work together. to bring all these leads and instruments together. So it's very, very helpful. So those are the, the two most important filtering plugins, I think, in FL. You also have um, the free parametric EQ, the original one. I think this is limited to seven bands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But if this is what floats your boat and you like graphical EQs, uh, take a look at this one. Let's go back to filter. We have the equal, which is basically a um, a set of eight different filter banks. Let's move these around. And you can morph between all these. Let's meet this. So this is actually really cool because you can get really complex um, Sounds, whereas if you were trying to do this with the Fruity primary trick EQ, you'd have to automate all these bands and then make a bunch of different um, automation curves here. With uh, the EQ, you can actually create all those different bands types and then have them morph with a single knob. So let's do a little bit of automation here, just for a brief moment. And then we'll mute it. Let's actually do that one. Let's do something a little bit more dubstepy. So let's grab a. Just 
So let's make something very, very drastic between the two these two other bands. Let's do it like that. We'll do this. And we'll do something like this. <laughs> So it's very cool. You can even change the bandwidth. So overall, a very cool plugin for sound design. You can even, uh, I believe, let's see, do random curves as well. So another random curve. And you can also interpolate from eight to one. So let's see, we have one over here. Let's make this flat. And we're gonna interpolate from one to eight. Let's click on interpolate from one to eight. Come on, give me a different curve right there. Come on. So yeah, it's it's a very interesting plugin. I mean, I'm already getting lost in it, so I'm gonna go ahead and move away from it now. Uh, let's close it down. Actually, let me just reload the project so I can keep going back to the stock project. Now let's move on to uh, effects like reverb and actually on this project, I'm using third party plugins for reverb. And why is that? Well, it's very simple to actually get a third party plugin and say, hey, this sounds amazing because the presets sound amazing. However, those presets might not be suitable for your track. And let me explain. So let me grab my leads right here. I'm going to push the reverb harder on this. Now, this reverb might sound cool at first. But reality is I'm having to duck it down with the fruity limiter. In sidechain mode. And reality sounds like this. Now that sounds okay, but the problem is I'm not programming this preset myself. So if you're using a stock plugin, you usually have to spend a little bit more time to get a quote unquote good sound. So let's follow the, pull up the free reverb too. So now, what I suggest is try to use the stock plugins as much as you can. Learn how to program them really well. So I'm going to use a little bit of delay on this. I'm going to open up the high cut. Make this a little bit larger, and I'm going to change the diffusion speed to be slower. And I'm going to add a bit of modulation. 
I'm also gonna make the decay shorter. Because if I have the decay longer, we have all these reverb cells that are going and smearing the next chord, which is the problem I was having with the other reverb. So if I'm not aware of what I'm doing, I can destroy my song very, very easily with reverb and delay. You can even change the stereo separation here. Make it completely mono by summing the left and the right, or make it completely stereo. Super wide. You can also tune the lower frequency, so um, I'm actually doing it with an EQ later down the road. I'm not really going to engage that. So you listen to this again now. Let's compare it to the reverb, the third party, third party reverb that's very, very good. But again, because the preset is not the right one for this track, it's not going to sound as good. So it's sustaining too long, you see that there? Too long. See the difference there? All right. Maybe I want this one to be a little bit wider now, so let's push it up a little bit wider. Now let's apply some of that limiting again, but now because this reverb is shorter, we don't have to be as drastic as we were before. Let's look at the, the little uh, ARP here. Again, it's going to a third party plugin. And that decay is very, very long. I think it's a five second delay there. Yeah, 5.16. Let's mute that. Let's engage the Freddy Reverb 2. Because I want this plug to be a little bit farther away, I'm going to reduce the early reflections. I am going to increase the decay, but to around 4.4, add a little bit of modulation, increase the size, decrease the diffusion a bit. So I'm going to cross over around 400. Increase the dampening. I'm also going to add a little bit of pre delay. All right, it's here in the context of the whole track. Let's 
Pay close attention to the time it takes for that reverb to decay. Now, that reverb is taking so long to decay, so now what I'll do is I'm going to go into the... Where are you? Here's a synth right there. I'm going to shut down the reverb right here. So I'm going to highlight the area I want to automate to keep things nice and organized. Right click, set create automation clip. And now I'm going to turn the reverb all the way down once it hits the drop. See there that I'm sending some of the hi hat in, I believe. Let's see. Oh, the cube. I'm sending some of the cube in. So instead of uh, doing the automation on the mix level now, um, what I'll do is just automate the reverb to reset on your sneeze. Hold on. Okay. So I'm going to grab the mix level here of the reverb, cut off all the I'm muting. Instead, I'm going to automate the start and stop or the bypass button of the reverb so it resets. So I'm going to right click on it. So I create automation clip. And I'm going to tell it to turn off right before the drop. And I'm gonna tell it to turn back on after the drop. So now basically we don't have the reverb from the, um, from the pads, I think, and was it the... Uh And the that uh the ARP so it shuts off immediately. So kick can come in and like smack you right in the face. Now if you're doing like trance or music that has a little bit more release. You can leave that reverb there, but I'm not going to do that because this is a complex track, so it's like... It's heavy on the rhythm and cutting off. Let's look at gross beat now. So gross beat is a very cool plugin. Let me... Go to the, oh yeah, there it was, the drop section. Check this out once I mute the gross beat here. Let 
basically grocery is a volume envelope shaper and a time envelope shaper so let me show you some of the presets here let's put this on empty so there's no there's no gating right there um as i click around here you'll see that there's different types of gating effects so let's close this And you can actually make sightseeing effects with this. If I go to my own, this is all very simple. If I go to the empty tab, I can right click to make points. If I select here the, uh, the quantization tab, I can say, hey, I want to make nodes right there. And then I'll bring some of these right here. So let's just make a basic gating effect and then we'll turn into a sidechain effect. Cool. So now instead, what I'll do is I'll make another node here, like a little tiny step. This guy does not want to cooperate there. There you go. Now instead of having these stepped curves, I'm going to right click and select single curve. I actually prefer the single curve too, so I'm going to click on that one. I usually stick with that one. It's a pretty clean one. It's not as, uh, as direct as the other curve, and it's a little bit, it has a little bit more volume to it. Oh, I need to delete this guy. go now make a little dip in here to recreate some of that sidechain effect and then i can bring up the curve here see that smoothing it up Now that might be a little bit too aggressive, so you can go back to the volume and mix that. And I actually already had a sidechain on these other ones, so let's mute them for a second. Oh, there you go. So cool, so you can go ahead and get really imaginative with this. Let's do a get right here. Let's open this up. Let's mute these steps right here. Now the cool thing is you can just jump between these different patterns here. Now 
to automate these, it's quite simple. Let me just go back to the momentary and back to the preset head on the track. I'm going to press uh, Control I to insert a track here. And then I'm going to go to my empty one, right click. Actually, let's use a Let's use the one where we're using the Transgate 2. Right click on it, it's like create automation clip. And now you have an automation clip for all these patterns. So now what I'll do is I'll right click on this other pattern right here, let's say Transgate 3, select copy value. And now make a step right there, paste it. And actually paste it till the end of that bar. I'm going to come back to my Transgate 2, select Copy Value, paste it right below the next node that we created, select Right Click, Paste Value, and now you can barely see it, but there's going to be a change, oh, hold on, I messed up, I think I grabbed Copy Value. Yeah, I grabbed the wrong one. There we go. So now let's set this one to 26. And let's do this for a couple more of them. So let's grab the um, triple gate, copy value, paste it, paste it. And do double that, copy value, paste value, paste it over here. Oh, it doesn't sound as cool. <laughs> uh, let's change it to the, um, the swing, copy value, paste value, paste value, and then we're going to end this back on the... Uh, the binning pattern, so let's uh, copy and paste it. There we go, we got some pretty cool uh, sequences there with Gross Feet. Now, Gross Feet is not just good for doing that volume gating effects as I have done here. It's also great for reimagining melodies. So let me open up a demo for Crosby that I did for Sweetwater. And we have these keys here. They're from Flex and they're going to the grocery right here. Let's take off the Grosby. So I'm using the Steinway D preset from Flex and I'm making use of these really fast staccato notes. Now what I'm going to use Gross Beat for is to wind down the time. So essentially with Gross Beat, you leave the time right there, everything plays back normally. If you bring this down right here, You start manipulating time and removing a little sliver of the end of the bar and stretching out the rest of it. So you can think about it like grabbing a piece of audio like this and then grabbing a section like stretching it out all the way over here. So that would be kind of, uh, how do you say, detrimental to the music if it became out of key or became out of sync. But it would be very fantastic if you had a a song that you can half time like this and get some really cool tones out of. So let me actually render this real quick just to show you. Renders audio clip. Bring this back into session. Let me cut off. So 
some of these bars right here. What I'm going to do is uh, cut the second half to emulate Grosby in uh, chopping off the second part of your of your um, measure and stretching out the first part. Now I'm going to engage the stretch feature and I'm going to drag this out. So you hear how these notes became this. Now the really cool thing about Grossi is that you can do all this live and you can trigger between different patterns. Let's go to momentary. It's like the, here we have, uh, where's the halftime preset? Oh, there you go, half speed. But you saw earlier, I it's very easy to do because if you go to the default, just grab a node, right click, set it to be single curve. Let me use the quantize to make sure that everything's nice and tight. So let me cut the second part of this uh, and mute it. So you see that it's very, very transparent. So between stretching the audio and stretching uh, in gross speed in real time, it's very seamless. But you didn't have to do any rendering. You didn't have to chop things up and get more experimental with it. So the fact you can recall this basically on any time, on any instrument you want, Just means that you can create a preset for growth suite, apply to many different pieces of audio later down the road, and instead of investing that time chopping up audio like we did here, you know, and then try to recreate, which would be nearly impossible to recreate, all these little sweeps and um, and uh, swirls and you know turntables uh, wind downs with uh, this audio. To actually get that type of effect, I'd have to um, come in here and automate the pitch. But a lot, I mean, let's do 48. It would just take so much time. That was actually quite cool, but it would take a lot of time to actually do this over and over again, right? You'd have to set this to be copy. Just, just so you can see how tedious it would be to try to recreate a Harmer patch. I mean, a Grosby patch. Uh, copy the value. Paste it. Paste it. Paste it. Oh man, I want to fall asleep. Let's get a little bit of flat right there at the very end. There we go. And usually it's a little bit too much. Let's do. Yeah, that would be just too much work. And then you cannot, you know, grab this and take it to another track of yours. Um, you can do that with Grossfeet, and it's so cool. It's uh, 
mute this audio and open up the menu again. And you can jump between these because we can automate them. Like I said earlier, you can even play these live. So um, if you see over here, I'm triggering these with my MIDI. So we start off at MIDI channel. Let's see. I believe this is C1. C1 right there and empty. And you go all the way up here. So you can automate this, play this live with your MIDI controller. It's very, very cool. So usually I just see people using it for halftime and, you know, not trying to call anyone about out, but with gross speed, you can do so much more than just halftime. You can do uh, sweep ups, sweep down, scratches, uh, glitch effects. As a matter of fact, I, if I remember correctly, this demo right here has the actual presets that Daft Punk use in their Tron Legacy soundtrack. So let's hear this back for a second. So you see here, we jump from complex three, complex four to complex five. And these are actually the three presets that that um, Daft Punk used for that Tron Legacy soundtrack. So it's very, very cool. If it's good enough for them, it has to be good enough for you guys. Um, I really can't stress enough how cool this plugin is. Also, you can just, even if you're not using any of these uh, patterns right here, you can just use this wheel over here to do some temp stretching, scratching and stuff. It's really cool. Uh, there's also the, uh, people forgot that there's the attack and release, so you don't get any clicks. You also have a volume envelope tension, so you can change the way these uh, nodes react. So, yeah. I really like this plugin. I can't stress it enough. And also, if you actually purchase it, you can use it as a VST and another third-party DW, so that's really cool. Um, and it's included inside of the, the signature bundle, so make sure you guys check out the signature bundle. Okay, let's go over to this uh, other demo I have, which is on Volcodex, and that's another one of my favorite FL Studio plugins. Since the beginning of the ages, man has been fascinated by fire, light, and time. So you hear there, I have my, my vocal Since the beginning, being repitched by a uh, new tone. If I go to new tone. Actually, let's see. Arrangements. The original vocal should sound like this. Since the beginning of the ages. <laughs> Man. That sounds so ridiculous. But um yeah, that's the whole idea is fascinated by fire, light, and time. The whole idea was to recreate a vocal that's a, a bit more cinematic, much deeper. So I grab this vocal, I edit it inside of the uh pitch corrector. That, that loads so quick, by the way. Um, and I just grab all these notes down and bring them. Down a few the beginning sentences. of the ages. Beginning of the ages. And then I change the formats on them. Beginning of the ages. Man has been fascinated by fire, light, and time. Beginning of the ages. Man has been fascinated by fire, light, and time. And then, of course, I did uh, some more editing. I chopped things up. I try to repitch things to be a little more uh, natural sounding. I try to fix the 
the S's on them uh, by chopping off the S's and so, uh, so on and so forth. Um, also, you can center these very, very quickly here. Big lights and time. Lights and time. Yeah, but in the audio recording and audio editing class that we did on, was it Mar May 28th? So the second class in the series, I cover this much more in detail, but that's how I got from here to getting a much deeper, more cinematic trailer-like uh, voice here. Since the beginning of the ages. And now I'm going to show you here the, the Vocodex, which is very, very cool. Since the beginning of the ages, man has been fascinated by fire. Let's mute it real quick. Let's add another Vocodex. Boom. Since the beginning. Let me remove all the reverb effects for a second. Since the beginning of the ages. This is the default preset. Nothing spectacular. Since the beginning of the ages. Let me just engage a Since the limiter. beginning of the ages. A lot of low end in there. Let's uh, lower the Since output. Since the beginning of the ages, man has been fascinated by fire, light, and time. Since the beginning of the ages, man. So let's do a little bit of a... Uh, EQing here. I'm gonna go into my band game multiplier. Since the beginning of the ages, man has been fascinated by fire, light, and time. I'm gonna lower that a little bit. Now I'm gonna engage my curious synthesizer and select for what's up. You can see every time I click on a new uh, preset, Five you Five get a preview Five 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 of the actual uh, synth sound. So let's go to robot sound. Since the beginning of the ages, man has been fascinated by fire, light, and time. So you see here, whenever uh, I change Since events. Since the beginning of the ages, man has been fascinated by fire, light, and time. We get more of an old school effect with uh, the lower resolution vocoders. And, and I can push this all the way up to 100. Since the beginning of the ages, man has been fascinated by fire, light, and time. So it's a very powerful vocoder. Like just the fact that I can go from. Basically, I think it was a uh, five bands all the way up to 100. Since the beginning of the ages. That's very, very powerful just by itself. Now, with the addition of uh, bandwidth controls and filter Since flatness. Since the beginning of the ages, man has been fascinated. You can hear how the filter becomes a little bit more brittle because you're changing the... the uh, not just the bandwidth, but like the uh, the resonance on the bandwidth. Since the beginning of the ages, man has been fascinated by fire. It's very interesting. And then we have the modulator, modulator bandwidth multiplier. Since the beginning of the ages, man has been fascinated by fire, light, and time. Since the beginning... Of the ages. It's very, very cool. Now let's go back to the vocoder that I had. Since the beginning of the ages, man has been fascinated by fire. You see here that I took off even more low end, removed some of the high end, and boosted up the mid. Since the beginning of the ages, man has been fascinated by fire. So my purpose of this was to make a robot version of my voice with a uh, oh that sounds like it's in a huge room since the beginning of the ages man has been fascinated by fire light and time since the beginning of the ages man has been fascinated by fire light you can make it sound like there's an ensemble as well since the beginning 
And that's all cool. But you probably also wonder how the hell do I put this in a musical context? Well, it's actually quite simple. Let's open up a new. Ah, come on. The resonance. I can't take the resonance anymore. Let's turn it off. Oof. Okay, there you go. Okay, you guys are probably wondering how do I use this in a musical context? Well, let's open a new project. Empty. And we're going to make a pattern for chords. Let's load up a basic Harmer synthesizer. I mean, we don't, we don't really need the chords from Harmer, but it's a nice plugin. Let's uh, put this in default. Just make a standard super saw. Damn, I keep hitting terrible notes. There you go. That'd be cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my sample pack folders. Samples. Let's do something very, very corny. <laughs> I need to be with you. Okay. And Here we got some vocals. I need to be with you. Let's put this on mixture track two. I need to be with you. That's where the the inputs of that. I need to be with you. I channel. need to be. And it set the project to be 150. I need to be with you. And I'm gonna load up the Weave Candy. I need to be with you. I'm and I'm also gonna load up. I need to be with you. I need to be with you track inside the pitch corrector, new tone, and I'm going to send the notes from new tone to the Harmer synthesizers. It's very simple. So see, you can, you can see all the notes here. I need to be with you. I'm going to click on this button right here, send to piano roll. And now my Harmer synthesizer kind of copies the vocal. <laughs> as best as it can, based on the MIDI that we got out of it. So let's clean this up a little bit. Uh, let's actually lower the output of these channels and add a free limiter just in case we clip. And then I'm gonna add a Vocodex. And this one, let's not use it yet though. Let's try to match the keys as much as possible. Okay. And I'm basically just grabbing the MIDI, chopping it up, making it cleaner, and using part of mental slide notes. So when I grab a MIDI note, I double click on it, create a part of mental note, so I can tell it this C sharp note to go up to F far. I'm gonna do that until I get the right uh, movement in my synthesizer, just like we have in the vocal. Okay, 
There's another note somewhere here. Listen back to her vocals. Let's actually pull this one back a little bit. Let's drop this one. Let's go back. Let's grab these guys and quantize them. Not all of them though, because I these are okay. The last one, I'll just uh, have it glide up. So the same for this one. The glide might be taking a little bit too long. Okay, cool. Uh, that should be good enough just so you guys can get an audio example. But you guys see there, it, it does take a little bit of time to set up, to get the right notes. I'm not even doing chords yet. That's a whole different animal. So once you have these melodies set up, it's a little bit easier to get chords. But this is the first step to getting a cool vocoder uh, sound. Now, if you're playing yourself, you can sing and play the keys yourself and figure out the notes you're singing, right? So that's a little bit easier. Now, this is uh, doing this after the fact, so it's a little bit hard. Now, I'm going to grab the vocal X. I'm going to sidechain both of these tracks to vocal X. And I'm going to remove them from my output signal. Now, when I go to vocal X, you don't hear anything. It's because I need to input a carrier. So my carrier, I'm going to name these real quick. Vox is going to be my modulator. My carrier is going to be my synthesizer. So I'm going to go to mod out of the Vox. My carrier is going to be my synth. So now you're hearing her vocal through the Harmer synthesizer. As you can hear here, there's no longer that vibrato that you hear with her vocal. Let's hear her vocal once again. Hear the vibrato at the very end. Once you use the vocal X, you don't get that anymore. So it's very important to get the notes as close as possible as it did there. But it flows enough well where it sounds quite good. Okay, so now once we're inside Vocodex, we can do 
a bunch of different things. Make the bands lower number. Chin to order. To make a little robot, we could also do um unison shift. Ten more bands. Let's do uh, twenty-eight. Add a little bit of uh, mid-range. I find is very important when using vocoder. You can change the contour from the consonants. So you're kind of DSing things. Here. If you add them back in, Add some chords under there. So we'll do. Uh, I believe this is going to be F. Let's see, we got F C sharp. Let's put this at the bottom. Actually, just doubling them down below is should sound pretty good. Oh, it's out of tune. Let's bring it down one more step. And now let's add uh, a few notes here. And like I said earlier, it's a little bit harder to get the... Get the right notes. Of course, if you're a little bit more knowledgeable in music theory than I am, it should be the case. <gasps> also, uh, the fact that we're using these uh, repitching notes, it's a little bit more difficult to, um, it's all felt to, um, to know where they're supposed to glide to. So let's uh, copy this over to a new pattern. And paste it there. And then in this case, what I'm going to do is instead of using the glide notes, I'll just straight up make chords. I'm going to quantize them in a second. Oh, snap. Just going to select them all. Control A. Control Q to quantize them. I believe this one should extend right here. Also, um, the velocity on these is a little bit wonky because the um, they're based on her performance. So let's uh, grab them all, send the velocity to maximum, 
Let's do it again. And then we're going to bring them back down a little bit. So they're all unison. Leave should have been. Let's do, let's do this. Hold on, let me, let me turn on the vocal. Okay, close enough. Um, I could spend probably way more time polishing that up, but let's go to the Vox again and just remove them. Vocodex. Of course, we can't hear anything because we have them. Um, Vocodex muted. Let's engage it. And there we go. <laughs> That's much more uh, apt for musical uh, endeavors. So that 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 was a real live uh, demonstration. It's uh, you know it's a bit of a complex process, but once you do it over and over again, it gets easier and easier. Again, I'm trying to present this, so it's, I'm I'm doing this a little bit slower than I would usually. Again, if we go to the um, envelope follower, we can do a couple different things. We can say, hey, we want the lower frequencies to come in a little bit slower. Or I want them to come in quicker. Let's put back to center. Let's double with the original vocal. And let's add a little bit of reverb to the vocal decks. In this case, I'm using a convolver which is Apple Studio's uh, Convolution Reverb that also doubles as a linear phase equalizer, which is kind of strange, but it works really well. So let's uh, add a warehouse. It's important to know that there's a sanguinizer built into the vocal decks. So the sanguinizer is actually, um, let me show you, it's a little effect that's actually uh, 
presets from Maximus itself. So if I go to Maximus, let's remove the vocal X, Sangurizer and the Sangurizer. If I go to the presets, you can see the Sangurizer preset. So let's go to C. So those are all just the presets that you find inside Sangurizer. And basically, if you disable them inside the Vocodex and the Sangurizer itself, you load up Maximus and load up one of the presets. You can then come in and dial in exactly what you need, which is very cool because after um, you know getting close enough with the built-in Sangurizer to Vocodex, you can say, "All right, let's get to mixing." Then you pull out the preset inside Maximus and tweak away. So I feel in this case, when you bring back the S's a little bit and duck them, of course, have them a little bit saturated, but duck them at their certain point. It's disable the compression. And let's pull this back a little bit. There you go. And now we can focus on the actual main lead. And let that one have all the consonants inside of it. Amazing. Okay, so I think we covered... Oh, no, we didn't cover everything. We missed one of my favorite new plugins, which is the Fruity Delay 3. Uh, this is going to be basically the end of this live stream. Because the Fruity Delay 3 is uh, quite a complex little plugin. As you hear there, it's... I mean, it sounds like a regular delay, but let's uh, lower the level of the vocal X. Let's remove it and put the Fruity uh, Delay 3 on the vocal itself. And you can hear there, it's... Uh, we're not in the default preset. However, if we bring in a little bit of modulation, add a little bit of saturation to it. We can actually detune it and try to emulate tape delays. How cool is that? It's had a little bit of diffusion, a little bit of stir spread. Let's add the ping pong module. Let's pull back the reverb cutoff and make it bandwidth. I need to be with you. I need to be with you. So you can get like radio sounding delays that you were, for example, in my other video, I mean, the other demo project where I have the reverb that's cutting off the low end and the high end. And you can do that all without, within one plugin, which is a free delay. That's amazing. Uh, you even have some sample rate reduction, reduction and bit reduction. I need to be with you. I need to be with you. So if you can put this on the, uh, the send and let me show you. Automate this when the vocals turn off. I 
need to be with you. I'm it's, uh, you suffer here. I need to be with you. I need to be with you. All right, here should be should do a trick. To to be with you. I need to be, be with you. And it's delayed a little bit longer. Let's do six. Be with you. I need to do eight. be with you. I need to be with you. Be with you. I need to be with you. You can create cool effects like that. You would have to, you know, render this vocal out, put a bit reduction plugin, then add delay, then add a reverb to it. It's uh, it's amazing what you can do with this. Um, be with you. Be with you. I need to be with you. Be with you. I need to be with you. So you can get even like this fluttering effects that you only would find like in Spring Reverb. So it's kind of uh, it's kind of really cool. With you. I need to be with you. I love it. And if you don't like the fact that the modulation changes the pitch of things, you can set the delay time to keep the pitch. Be with you. I need to be with you. And it will keep the pitch. So that's very, very handy. Let's grab the fader, bring it up over here. Let's bring it somewhere like this. I need to be with you. Be with you. I need to be with you. I love this. <laughs> it's it's amazing. Okay. So, hey. Hi, Sahid from Pakistan. And Praveend. What's up? So, from Australia. So, we got, let's see how many contents we have. We got uh, Africa, Jamaica, Middle East countries, uh, Pakistan, of course, Middle Eastern. We had someone from the US and we have someone from Australia. So, we're all, we're we're getting there. We just need that guy to come in from Antarctica and let us know what what's up. <laughs> okay, so I've been doing this live stream for I think two and a half hours now, so I, I have to call it a day. If you guys have any questions, let me know right now so you can address them. See, I'm gonna wait a few minutes. Okay, and before before we call it a day, though, I need to let you guys know about the final class that we're gonna have, which is let me show you. We're going to be hosted on next week, July 23rd. Where we're gonna to try to do a track from beginning to end here in Tadafal. So we're gonna do it's gonna be a rapid review of everything we've done before. So we looked at uh the introduction to FL's workflow, recording and audio editing, MIDI editing, FL Studio synthesizers, FL Studio effects, and then we do our review next week. So if you guys have any questions about any of these past uh um classes that we had, make sure you save them so you can ask them on July 23rd. And also we if you have uh you know, interest in learning more about FL, go check out those videos. So those are all inside of the Music Marketing YouTube channel, so make sure you subscribe to see them. 
if you go back to that FL Studio uh, for Pro Tools users uh, live streams, you you guys are going to learn everything from the beginning to right now. So it's it's a uh, it's a very thorough live streams that I've been doing from from just learning how to set up FL, how to input your MIDI controllers, to how to um, uh, use the note pitch effects inside FL Studio. You know, instead of using regular MIDI, you can use the scoring technology that's inside FL to pitch your um, particular instrument channels, which is very, very cool. Um, all the way down to like how to use vocal decks, which I covered today. So we, I covered so much information in all these classes. Okay, let me see. Let me know if you have any, have any more questions and I'll answer them for the next uh, few minutes or so. If I see that there's no more questions, um, I'm going to call it a day because my throat is killing me now because I've been talking for two and a half hours straight. <laughs> oh, and by the way, join us on the Facebook group, which is called FL Studio Club. If you look it up on Facebook, we are there. We uh, answer questions. We also... Um, you should have live streams there, so we have well, quite a bit of resources there too. Okay, so let's do. I'm gonna open up the. The first demo project I had. And again, as a refresher, today we covered. Dynamics plugins, uh, delay plugins, which include the reverbs as well, uh, spectral plugins like EQ filtering, and then we covered some special effects like growth speed and vocodex, which are very important to FL Studio. And I, I would say even to some music genres, they're absolutely important and necessary. If you're gonna make EDM, trap, hip hop, you need to have uh, plugins like growth speed because they absolutely change your life. Okay, so very quickly press F8 and you can see all your plugins, all these beautiful plugins. Okay, I'm gonna call it a day now because it's uh, it's been quite a long day today. Um, again, make sure you stay tuned for all the other classes. Let me pull up the schedule once again. Again, May 21st, it was uh, Intro to FL's, FL's Workflow. May 28th, Recording and Audio Editing. June 18th, it was MIDI Editing. June 25th, it was FL Studio Synthesizers. July 16th, we covered FX, which was today. And next week, we're going to do July 20th. Uh, on July 23rd, we're going to do a review of everything we've covered. Yes, I'll give a link to the, to the video, guys, to, to the Facebook group. And that group is monitored by us, so you're, you guys are not going to find any spam there, which you find in a lot of groups. Okay. Oh, wow. I can't add web addresses. That's so weird. Okay, so I'm going to... That is strange. I cannot add, add web addresses. Hold on. Give me a second. I'm going to type it out. See if I can do it manually from... Um... Oh, snap. from here let's do uh, www.facebook.com it's four slash groups four slash fl studio 
Hop. Official. And then. There you go. That should hopefully work. Okay, yeah, that works. So follow that link to the FL Studio Club group. Again, it's FL Studio Club official. Um, yeah, there we're gonna, we've been covering a lot of topics and answering a lot of questions. So if you guys have any more questions about FL, make sure to submit them there. Give us a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, thank you guys for tuning in with us. And I'll catch you guys soon. I'm Kevin Ochoa with Music Marketing TV. Talk to you later, bye-bye. Oh man, the link is not working. Okay, hold on. Okay, I know I said goodbye already, but yeah, I need to get, get you guys that link properly. Hold on. That is so annoying. Let me see if I... Let's try this again. The thing with YouTube is that they don't let you, um, there you go. Okay. I guess the only way to submit, um, websites through YouTube is through me posting it myself through the, um, official, uh, YouTube channel. So if I'm using my private YouTube channel, I cannot post the links there. Okay. That's, a, that's interesting. This one should work now. There you go. So it should look like this. Yeah, just follow this link and sign up. Join us. We have 100, uh, 903 members. And yeah, today was lightweight on post, but yeah, we we don't have any spamming because we control it. Okay. All right. Once again, I'm Kevin Ochoa with Music Marketing TV. Thanks so much for tuning here, staying here with us. Um, and I'll catch you guys next week. Bye-bye.